a screw here. What we're going to do now is replace Raven's brain, which right now is a multi wee copter home built brain with a commercially available DJI Hobby NASA brain. We first got interested in the NASA after we saw these videos on the DJI website. We thought the kind of stability you see being demonstrated here would be perfect if we could really get it to work that way. Let's see what's inside of this little box here. It's pretty straightforward. Here is what appears to be the main flight control system. This, according to the manual, is called a versatile unit. It appears to be the USB interface and ties into power. Here we have looks like some adhesive strips and some wires to hook it up, possibly to your radio. And Oh, USB adapter. Let's do the main, open the main controller here real quick. It's pretty basic. Curious about the tape they're giving us. It looks pretty thin. I suspect there's very little, no, nothing at all to dampen vibration at all here. So, might suggest something else, perhaps. We'll have to see how that works out. Wires look pretty straightforward. Straightforward, standard looking USB. A to, oh, micro B with that. Mysterious, versatile unit. Light there, that supposedly indicates your battery. Uh, these wires here have to be soldered to your battery. And these go to the main controller. Once you have the software downloaded, you have to register it with your email address. Something to be aware of is that this registration process isn't instantaneous. You have to wait maybe 15 minutes or half an hour to actually get the confirmation back so you can start using the software. Okay, here we have the motor mixer. Basically, it determines what type of multi-rotor system you're flying, whether it be a quad or a hexacopter, whether it's plus configuration, X configuration. The coolest thing about it is it, it's everything's labeled. The little picture pops up, it shows you where to hook your motors up to. So there's no guessing. There's no reading manuals to figure out where to put things. It's all in the software. It's great. Here on the TX monitor page is where you monitor your stick positions for your throttle, rudder, elevator, aileron. You can see these exact same labels are here on the brain, A, E, T, R. And if you have a spectrum receiver, the wires go to the same places, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. They're labeled the same, makes it easy. As you can see here, as you move the sticks around, everything goes accordingly. And if something's wrong, you just hit the button here and reverse it. It's really easy. Okay, what we have here is our control mode switch. It has three functions. Manual mode, which if you have a multi-Wii system, is, is equivalent to of the acrobatic mode. And you have the attitude mode, which is like the stable mode, same system. Now, the failsafe, you would set your radio to go to failsafe in the case of emergency. One of the things we like about the NASA is the ability to adjust the, essentially the PID, the stability settings, with the little knob here on the radio. It's great. And the thing we just discovered, you could do it in flight, which even better yet. Adjust knob to minimum position and rolling it back and forth testing. A little wobbly, but still flyable. It's essentially analog. It's not like a three position switch. Basically, as you move it, the values are increasing, making it more stable, faster responding. The knob all the way up. It's very crisp, very solid, very smooth, fast responses. Okay, here's the gimbal page. We're not using this feature, but for those of you that are, you know what this is. And on the fifth page in the software, one of the most talked about features, automatic landing. Essentially what this is, it's a fail safe. When the battery reaches a certain level, which is monitoring at all times, it'll first give you a warning. After the warning, if you ignore the warning, it'll start descending automatically. Now, of course, it's bad for your battery to play with this a lot, but it's there just in case. Overall, the software is incredibly easy to use. It's straightforward, it has exactly what you need, not a lot of what you don't.
Flying FPV, there, there really just isn't any other way to say it. The NASA just handles like a dream. I have no doubt a whole generation of FPV pilots is going to come up and start with this as their first flight control system. And they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, this is pretty easy. Tekkenstein and I have wondered how much it would have stunted our growth, honestly, if we started out with this. But don't let that stop you. It's beautiful. Of course, now that we have it working, we couldn't resist trying to duplicate some of those stunts the guys in the DJI videos were doing. So, here we go. So that's what we know about the NASA multi-rotor controller. Hope you enjoyed watching. See you next time. All right. Fly safe.